It began with a pulse and a message displayed across a star field. Defeat the Metroid of the planet Zebeth and destroy the mother brain. In 1986, Metroid was born. Hi, I'm Victor Lucas from the Electric Playground, and one of my video game favorites is Metroid. The series heroine, Samus Aran, is one of the most indelible characters the game industry has ever produced, and she's been well represented across many different Nintendo games and other media, but the reason why she resonates is her core series, which began on the Nintendo Entertainment System. I remember seeing the original Metroid in a Nintendo Power magazine at the time, and it was a game that I just, I just absolutely needed. The idea of sort of this big, expansive, open world, the graphics at the time blew me away. You look at them now, and they're not as, quite as impressive. Um, but I, I remember getting the game for the first time, and it came in that silver box, which was super unique at the time, because all the boxes were black. I think it's obvious to most people who've played it, there's a certain alien vibe about it, and it's been said by the developers that they really did like the design ethos and the feel of the, of the movie when they were creating uh, Metroid. You know, you've got the strong female protagonist, the dark sci-fi. It's like a modern interpretation of the alien as a video game. We didn't have the internet back in my day yeah. to sort of lean on to like, okay, well, how do you beat this boss? Or like, when do you get this weapon? It was all the conversations that you have with your friends at the playground. Like, oh, how did you fight Ridley, for example? Like, how did you get to that spot? Or did you know that there was a secret wall? Those things, those myths and those legends, it was like the first time for me where sort of opened up a completely different world of games. You could see the influence of that game just basically spread throughout the industry for years and it actually took a while I think for people to actually pick up on that stuff but you, you still see it today. Although the introduction of the first Metroid game was very successful, the sequel was crafted for an entirely different platform. One of the theories about why it was a Game Boy title was because the lead producer of the original title was also the uh, the man who created the Game Boy and maybe he was showing a bit of favoritism, you know, I don't know but it, you know, it kind of makes sense. Now that second Metroid game, originally for the Game Boy, is making a comeback, but this time for Nintendo's 3DS family of systems. Here's Nintendo of America's Bill Trinan. Metroid Samus Returns is an all-new 3DS remake of the original Game Boy game, Metroid 2 Return of Samus, uh, and tells the story of Samus as she goes to try to eradicate the Metroid threat from the galaxy. Metroid 2 Return of Samus was perhaps the one that was most rudimentary simply because it was developed for the original Game Boy. And so it was, of all the Metroid games, the one that hadn't been remade yet. Um, and because it was born on a portable platform, we thought it made sense to bring it back on a portable platform. But at the same time, by being able to leverage the power of Nintendo 3DS and the depth of those 3D visuals, um, what ended up happening was they completely remade all of the maps and everything within the game world in a way that actually makes this perhaps the most advanced side-scrolling Metroid game that we've ever produced. We'll have more on Metroid Samus Returns in a moment, but first, something very interesting about the Metroid franchise is that the narrative timeline does not follow the chronological delivery of the games. Let's face it, Samus is the, the universe's most formidable bounty hunter. She probably gets into fights and scrapes everywhere she goes, so you know, the development teams have been able to kind of pick at her history and decide where they want to take the next gaming experience. Who knows where they'll go next? In the first game, Samus traverses the caverns of a planet called Zebeth, which in later games is called Zebes. She's a bounty hunter in a very cool power suit, and she's trying to stop space pirates from using a dangerous bug-like alien species, the Metroids, as a bioweapon to take over the galaxy. Samus eventually battles and defeats an evil AI creature called Mother Brain, and its two space pirate guardian bosses, Ridley and Kraid, and saves the galaxy. Zero Mission was when the developers, uh, in a kind of a, a classic Nintendo style, went back to the original and looked at, you know, this game is, is, a, is an absolute classic, but how can we make it better? And so they, they made some tweaks to the gameplay, they expanded it a little bit. And so, you know, it became another game within the series for fans who weren't old enough to have discovered it the first time. And maybe some fans didn't want to go back and play that, you know, the 8-bit experience. They wanted a more modern visual interpretation. So it made sure that those fans didn't miss out on what was, you know, one of the great early Nintendo gaming classics. As welcome a step forward for the franchise as the Game Boy Advance games were, nothing had prepared us for what Nintendo had crafted for Samus for the GameCube in 2002. I kind of feel like Metroid was at, a, at its height when Metroid Prime released. That was the game, you know, at the time it was an FPS, everyone thought this is going to be terrible. And then, like, when you, when you first played it, it was just this amazing, like, sci-fi, better than 
you even realized it could be. In all the Metroid games, this is by far my favorite one. I can still absolutely crystal clear picture myself sat in my place back in London, you know, playing the game, dying frequently and just loving it. The story for the game centered on Samus Aran landing on a planet called Talon 4 in an attempt to stop space pirates from exploiting an energy source called Phazon. In the ancient ruins of the Chozo, Samus fights Metroids, space pirates, and bosses like Meta Ridley before ultimately facing off against the titular Metroid Prime. It's just one of those games that everybody who played it and appreciated it really loved it. You don't have people who think Oh, it was okay. It's like, oh my god, I love that game. Check out my smile. A Metroid Prime spin off story came out in 2006 with the multiplayer focused Metroid Prime Hunters for the Nintendo DS, but the main story for Samus Aran had continued with Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. One of the key things there is that that's when we did really see uh, multiplayer for the first time. And it, were, it was an interesting experience where it took the, the basis of Prime and then built upon that, but then added a multiplayer layer to it. I think one of the things that was interesting about Prime and one of the things that people questioned a lot was it was the first time Nintendo had handed the uh, Samus to someone outside of Nintendo and outside of Japan. And so when Retro started to build it, they kind of built it from this North American perspective, which I think was one of the great successful things. And then by moving on to you know, Prime 2 with the multiplayer, kind of, it's more of a continuation of that, kind of that North American feel to gameplay. Metroid Prime 2 Echoes, which takes place on the planet Aether, played with the idea of light and dark variations of the environments and enemies. Fighting the Ing, Samus hunts for the light energy that the planet needs to survive. Samus also has memorable encounters with the boss of the game, the Phazon-infused Dark Samus, a powerful villain that would go on to threaten our heroine in the acclaimed sequel, Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. What happened with Prime 3 it was actually the opportunity to explore different planets, so it gave that game a really broad, extended feel to it. So when we ended up releasing all three of them in surely one of the greatest trilogy packages ever, it was a really interesting kind of uh, opposite to the previous games because you were playing the single environment and now you've got this whole range of worlds to explore. After planet hopping across several distinctive locations, the end of corruption saw the destruction of Dark Samus and the end of the threat of Phazon. Retro's run with the Metroid Prime franchise had apparently come to an end, but Samus's story would continue with the 2016 3DS game Metroid Prime Federation Force. It was a great package. You had Blast Ball, which was this really interesting um, three-player like sci-fi football, but then you also had a Federation Force, you know, a separate game to itself, which was this four-player bounty hunter game. And it's a shame because because it didn't feature Samus. Fans were very, very critical. I mean, Samus appears but in a tiny bit much later into the game. And so because of that, it was seen as like, we don't want this version. Get rid of it and give us the one that we want. And I think it's, it's unfortunate for Federation Force because it got a bad rap. It wasn't the game which people felt it was. After the events of Federation Force, which acted as a side story to flesh out the element of the Galactic Federation Marine Corps in the Metroid universe, the narrative timeline shifts back to familiar territory as we see the return of Samus. What's interesting about the, the development team's approach to Metroid Samus Returns is that although it's based on the original Game Boy game, and while people have fond memories of that Game Boy game, if you were to go back and play it now and compare the two, they would be very, very different experiences. So Metroid Samus Returns is a completely redone game that's based on that original game. Um, and you will see some of those homages, you'll see some similar enemies, but they've added a whole lot that's new to the game as well. This modern reboot had a different developer, Spanish game makers Mercury Steam. It truly is a collaboration with Yoshio Sakamoto working directly with the team in Spain and they've been able to leverage both his creative vision for the Metroid universe and their prowess at developing these side-scrolling action-adventure games. And they've been able to, in the process, add in new layers to the Metroid gameplay with things like the, uh, the counter that Samus uses, um, as well as the new Aeon abilities and some new capabilities that Samus has. And in the process, what they've done is they've made a game that feels very much like a Metroid game, but has also made Samus perhaps the most powerful she's ever been in, in any of these side-scrolling Metroid games, but at the same time, done it in a way that still challenges 
the core Metroid fan and the core game player. The mainline Metroid story continues after the events of Samus Returns with the 16-bit classic Super Metroid. A lot of the games from the Super Nintendo era, um, you know, Super Metroid, those games still hold up to, to these days. They still look gorgeous, they sound gorgeous, and they feel good. That gameplay was tight. A fun game is a fun game. This game saw a return of Ridley from the first Metroid, as well as battles with reborn versions of Kraid and Mother Brain, and ultimately the destruction of the planet Zebes and the end of the Metroids. Or maybe not, because 16 years later, the story continued with the divisive Metroid Other M. Other M was was beautiful, was cinematic, very dramatic. But like you said, it really did split the fan base because for the first time we had proper cutscenes, we had real proper story into the game. And then Samus spoke for the first time. And I think it's kind of like you watch Judge Dredd and there's that, like, should he take his helmet off? It's that, you know, do you need to hear Samus? And there was a lot of people which really didn't like that. And, and the way in which they chose to portray her was often seen as quite controversial in that Samus, for all the previous games, had been this strong female lead character that could do whatever she wanted. And then in Other M, she was kind of tamed down a little bit and more damsel in distress. And I think that's what a lot of people didn't like is that their heroine now needed a hero. The mainline Metroid adventure continued with one of the highest rated Game Boy Advance games of all time, Metroid Fusion, which did come out at the same time as the GameCube's Metroid Prime, but instead featured a traditional 2D scrolling camera perspective. Side-scrolling Metroid games for me are just so good. They're really important, the, the sense of discovery and wonder that I had when I was a kid, I still have those. I'm just always excited to get back into those worlds, and I think you could put those games into the hands of, of a kid these days, and they'd feel right at home. Back to 2D has been something asked of the Metroid franchise for many years, but finally, here in 2017, with Samus Returns, we got it. Samus, of course, has many of her traditional abilities in this game, morph ball, missiles, uh, things like that. Um, there are a couple of key new elements that have been added, and uh, one is her melee counter. Samus now has the ability to do a melee counter strike uh, that will knock enemies back. So enemies that may be invincible or impervious to her attacks, uh, by using this melee counter, then she's able to, to then find their weak spot and attack them back. Um, but it's, it's not an automatic thing. You can miss with the melee counter uh, and take damage from the enemies, and so it does require skill and precision in order to execute it. On top of that, uh, there's a whole other layer of new abilities called Aeon abilities. Um, and Aeon abilities give Samus tremendous new power that are going to be really important in helping her explore the world and also in, in battling those, uh, those enemies in this game. But what is it about Metroid that makes it so special and so meaningful to so many players? I think what's unique about the Metroid franchise is the sense of place that you get from those worlds and those games. There's certainly a sense of, of solitude, a sense of loneliness in those alien worlds, the sense of threat that you get, and yet at the same time, a sense of discovery that you get as Samus uh, gets new powers that give her access to new areas. Also, of course, just that sense of challenge when you're, you're battling some of those amazing enemies and amazing bosses. My Metroid memory, right, is that going to college and my roommate Kyle Hayes buying a GameCube on day one and me sitting there and watching him, I'd eat frozen pizzas and watch him play Metroid. Metroid Prime. And to watch him just go through and do this first person thing that seemed amazing and seemed awesome. And the fact that they're remaking Metroid 2 and putting it on a 3DS. For me, I was with everybody else. Why isn't this on Switch? Come on guys, I won't play it, I won't play it. And then when I took the demo for it, I was like, this is a really good game and I need to play it. And it's the fact that it's what you know and love for Metroid mashed up with, I think, current, present day improvements and what you'd expect out of that. I think Metroid is excellent at carrying that feeling of loneliness and you know that feeling when you're in space i'm saying this as if anyone watching this has been to space but i think they do a really good job at selling all the weapons and the armor and all that stuff i love the metroid games uh the fact that we're getting two on the horizon oh i can't i can't deal with it i gotta like take a minute <laughs> but what about the future what can nintendo tell us about what's next for metroid I would love to be able to give you a sense of the future of Metroid, but uh, unfortunately all I can say right now is that we're ready to release this game. Sakamoto-san I think has rekindled his passion for Metroid, so hopefully uh, he'll be focused on it again in the future at some point. But the near term really all we're looking at is what we've announced at E3, which is Metroid Prime 4 for Nintendo Switch. It's the rebirth of Metroid, so obviously we've got Metroid Samus Returns, you know, the remake of the, of the classic Metroid 2, and then we've got the next one, which I'm sure you're going to ask me about. <laughs>
<laughs> I know you're going to ask me. <laughs> Can you tell us about Metroid on the Switch, please, Andrew? <laughs> that we announced it at E3. <laughs> And that's it. Well, I tried, guys. Guess you'll just have to keep it locked here to EPN to see what Nintendo has in store for Metroid in the future. Until then, enjoy Metroid Samus Returns. Hey, thanks for checking out that video on our EPN channel. It's just one small part of the things that we make around here. So if you liked it, don't forget to check out some of our other vids and hit that subscribe button.